Well, welcome to our webinar on why SDN skills is a big boost to networking careers. This webinar is brought to you by the Open Networking Foundation in collaboration with ITpreneur. My name is Connie Tai. I am from the marketing team at ITpreneur. I will be your host and moderator today. ITpreneur is a provider of course web products and services to IT training and consulting companies. This is the agenda today for our webinar. During this year, the Open Networking Foundation has launched the ONF Certified SDN Professional Program that includes two exams, the SDN Associate and SDN Engineer. ONF's development of the OCSP program is in response to the ever-growing need for those within the open SDN industry to validate their SDN knowledge skills and abilities within this changing field. And we have received many requests um, actually to try to understand more about the market landscape for SDN education. So we are really, really honored and delighted to bring to you our guest speaker today, Dr. Levi Perigo. He is from the University of Colorado at Boulder. And he has a lot of experience introducing SDN education in academia and to practitioners. I will have um, an introduction further on um, the bio of um, Dr. Perigo. But just to mention that if you have any questions during this webinar, please um, address that in the chat box, make use of the chat box. And at the end of the webinar, we'll Dr. Perigo will cover as many as possible. So before I continue, it will be useful for us to understand more about the audience today. So I'm going to launch two small poll questions. The first one is, are you familiar with SDN? So we would like to know from you your knowledge level of SDN. So your answers are coming in, and I am going to close it now and share with the audience. So the majority of you have some knowledge of SDN. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Then the next poll question is, what is your plan for SDN training and certification? Are you looking to train your customers? If you are training or consulting companies, are you going to train your team or yourself? Okay, perfect. I'm going to close the poll and share the answer. Okay, so the majority of you are looking to train yourself, and then some of you are going to uh, train your customers. All right, very good. So, as mentioned today, our guest presenter is Dr. Levi Perigo. He is a scholar in residence in the Interdisciplinary Telecom Program at the University of Colorado at Boulder. Dr. Perigo is also a research associate at the Open Networking Foundation. The Next Generation Network, SDN NFV course he developed for the master's level engineering students, um, focuses on open SDN and promotes the use of SDN and open flow in industry. His course has been used by academia and industry to enrich the body of knowledge and validate skills through the Open Networking Foundation Certified SDM Professional Program. So we are really delighted to have Dr. Perigo today uh, with his extensive knowledge on SDM. And on that note, I am going to Right, 
Okay, I'm going to uh, pass on to Dr. Parago with his uh, talk today. Thank you very much, Connie. So let me give you a background on kind of where I'm coming from, and this will lead into how the industry is changing and what we've done at the University of Colorado to train both academia as well as industry. So the interdisciplinary telecom program at the University of Colorado is both a master's degree and a PhD program. And one of the things that we focus on here at ITP is our master's degree is really heavy on hands-on labs. We use all industry-grade equipment, and each course that we have at ITP requires about 10 to 15 hours of lab work, hands-on lab work, every single week. So our students are putting in 40 or 50 hours of hands-on lab work every week. And then our PhD program focuses on cutting-edge research, so we kind of have both hands-on as well as research. And what we do with the interdisciplinary aspect is we're a very, very technical program, but we also kind of have all the best of business and policy courses as well. So our students come out knowing not only the hands-on technical, but how to be a technical manager. And we have, we've separated our, our program into four or five separate tracks. So network engineering, network security, policy and strategy, as well as wireless. So our students can focus on very specific parts of engineering. And I'm a full-time faculty in the network engineering curriculum. And what I want to tell you is kind of what we focus on and how that's changing in industry. So in our network engineering program, we have mandatory classes um, a class on routing protocols, which is specifically BGP. This focuses our students on getting service provider and ISP jobs. We have our traditional telecom lab, which is our, think of it as our Cisco routing and switching course. And this is a master's level course, so about at the midterm, all of the students will have the Cisco CCNA certification. And at the end of that semester, they'll usually have the CCMP route or the CCMP switch. But some of the things that we've had to do in academia to keep up with industry is we've added a network programming course, which is all in Python. And this is something that two years ago, most people didn't even know that Python existed. And now we have it as a mandatory course. Another thing that we had to add is Unix and Linux. Five years ago, everyone thought that Linux was just server administration. But with SDN coming, everything is open source, and everything that's SDN typically runs on Linux. So we've made it mandatory that all of our students know Linux. And we've added a network management course. So again, a couple years ago, this was SNMP, Active Directory, kind of traditional network management. But today, this is how to automate your network. I think the common phrase in network engineering is how to automate yourself out of a job. Well, that's what we're doing here at the University of Colorado is we're teaching our students how to use Python and Linux about how to automate everything instead of just the traditional CLI that we used to teach. And in a few minutes, I'll talk about why this is becoming so relevant. So we also, those are our core courses that everyone has to take, but then we also offer electives of traditional CLI for data center, voice over IP, and then as Connie mentioned, we have two courses in our next generation networks. The first one is kind of introduction to SDN and NFV, and then an advanced SDN and NFV, and I'll talk about those in much more detail as we go. So why do we get certifications in general? So vendor neutral or vendor specific certifications. So there's a lot of different motivation for this training. So do you just need more knowledge, more information on specific job that you already have? 
Or are you trying to get a different job or that promotion that says, in order to get a promotion, you have to have this specific certification? Uh, another reason is just to prove the knowledge on the topic. So some people want to say, I've been in industry for 10 years. I don't need to study for this exam. Let me just go and take it and prove to everyone that I know what I'm talking about. And then arguably, I think money is always a driver of everything, right? So there is proven, proven research that industry certifications increase the value of your salary. So these are typically the main motivations for certification. Now, a thing that I think is very important to note is that vendor-specific or vendor-neutral certifications are a mandatory job requirement. I don't know how many of you have either been looking for a new job or are managers and have posted a new job, but on every single job in network engineering, there are certifications required. There'll be some certifications that are required and there'll be some that are listed as desired, but either way, there's always certifications that are on new job descriptions. So, for example, a new hire will say, we need a CCNA certification. For five years experience for that job, maybe it's CCNP. For 10 plus years, let's say they need the CCIE. And what I'm finding now is even technical manager positions have vendor specific certifications that are required on their job descriptions. So you think of it, why would a manager need to have a vendor specific certification? But that's, if any of you have looked, these are kind of the standards of today. So one thing that we're running into in academia is industry is saying, you know, what's more important? What if someone has industry experience and a few certifications? I think I'll give them a promotion over someone with just an advanced degree, such as a master's degree. So what we're doing here at the University of Colorado is proving very successful is not only do our students come out with a master's degree, but they're also going to have multiple certifications as well. Um, sorry to interrupt. Um, someone mentioned that he has problems with the audio. So I just want to make sure that uh, all of you are able to listen to the webinar. So could you maybe just use the chat box to let us know that you can hear us? Then it will be like an individual issue this person has. Okay, thank you. I guess uh, then this person will have to uh, log in again. Perfect. So please continue. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So these are the kind of industry certifications that we find are kind of the most in demand right now. So there's your typical network engineering vendor specific certification. So I've been mentioning Cisco before and that's just kind of even if you're working on Juniper, Arista, Adtran, whatever the vendor hardware, typically Cisco kind of has a hold on that market as far as what certifications are relevant. But some other ones that we're seeing come into popularity are VMware as well as Amazon Web Services because so many people are moving towards virtualization and cloud-based services. So the other vendor neutral ones are the CompTIA brand, so Network Plus, Security Plus, as well as the wireless certification. Um, Security Plus is one of those, if you ever want anything network security related, you'll notice that the Security Plus certification is a requirement for any of those positions. So here at the University of Colorado, our students are going to come out with um, Cisco specific certifications, as well as the Security Plus, the CWNA, the IPv6, as well as the SDN specific certifications, which I'll talk about here. So kind of your path for traditional network engineering when moving towards software-defined networks is we have the ONF SDN Associate exam, which is more for business professionals with limited technical knowledge. You still need something kind of baseline, such as the CompTIA Network Plus. But then we also have the ONF certified SDN engineer level. So many people will already have their industry certifications, such as CCMP, CCIE, et cetera, 
And those are kind of the, the individuals who will be targeted for the ONF SDN engineer certification, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And I'm going to ex explain why having vendor specific certifications as well as software defined network certifications are important. So when you think of software defined networking, so why is it important? Why do we care? Why do we need certification in this topic? So everything that I've talked about so far, service providers routing, traditional routing and switching, virtualization, this whole network engineering model is changing. So just like I said at the University of Colorado, we had to adapt. We've added Python programming courses, we've added mandatory Unix courses, and we've added software-defined networking courses. And the reason that software-defined networking and specifically training and certification is so popular is the whole point of software-defined networking is moving away from this proprietary hardware, software, command line interface. So not only do you still need some of these vendor-specific certifications, you need to know how to program a router in Cisco or Juniper, but we also need to be able to move towards this SDN environment. And the reason that the ONF and these SDN-specific certifications are so important is, as I said, the benefit of SDN is it's open source, it's abstraction, so we can write a Python program to program the network. I don't need to know the specific Cisco CLI commands anymore. So the whole benefit of SDN is vendor neutrality. If I can learn Python programming, or if I know how SDN works, I don't need to know all the very minute specific commands of vendor hardware anymore. I can just use open source technology. I can understand the concepts. So this SDN is changing the way that networking works. In the past two years, we have understood that SDN in every major service provider around the world, they're transitioning to an SDN environment. So new skills in a very in-demand technology, this has given you a benefit over a vendor-specific certification in network engineering. So they go hand in hand. You kind of still need those vendor-specific certifications, but adding SDN on top of that just makes you that much more in demand. So what the ONF does, so I'm a research associate at the ONF, and we kind of work with vendors and open standards. We're developing what SDN is, how it works, how it should work, and we're educating the market on making people understand what SDN is and how it's going to improve their business. What we've developed is a few different certifications. So this model is kind of the ONF SDN architecture model. This is how SDN works. This is how we're transitioning from a traditional routing and switching to a software-defined network. So this is a very common, I know it said about 75% of you have some familiarity with SDN. So this should look familiar to you. But at the top layer is programmability. This is how we program our network. So we can write a Python application that has an app on my phone that I just click a button on that app and it reprograms the way my network routes traffic. No longer do I have to go into the infrastructure layer and configure individually 20 different routers or switches. I can literally press one button on my phone and it reconfigures my whole entire network. So if you think about the possibilities of SDN and how it's going to make network engineering so much easier, so much granular, the possibilities are really endless. If you can think of it and you can have someone program it, you can change the whole landscape of network engineering. So to prove some of these SDN technologies, ONF has two different certifications. The first one is um, vendor neutral, and it is the OCSA exam. This is targeted for um, technical people with maybe that are maybe technical managers, 
um, but have some technical background. And what this is going to do is if you are a specific network engineer that works on Cisco gear or Juniper gear, adding this OCSA certification to your resume is going to show that not only do you know traditional routing and switching, but you know the new up and coming SDN architecture, how it works, um, best practices, and why it's important. We've added the SDN engineer exam. Now, this is a much different level exam. This is for people who maybe have a primary job of working on SDN. So they are programming SDN switches. They're programming applications to control the network. So this is someone who has a vast experience in routing and switching and network engineering, but also works kind of on a daily basis on SDN type equipment. Here's kind of the general audience of who works on SDN and where these associate engineering exams come into play. So the SDN associate exam, like I said, is, is a little more um, less technical. There's several topics on why is SDN important, how would you tra transition a traditional networking to a software-defined networking, um, and then the SDN engineer level exam is, you know, for network architects, some specific network engineers, and it's above the CCNA level, um, maybe a little above CCMP if you want to compare it that way. But the thing that these two exams have in common is they are very, very in demand in industry. And it's going to give the traditional network engineers that competitive advantage either when looking for a new job or going for that first promotion. So let me give you a little background on what we do here in the University of Colorado on some of the courses that we've developed. So I'll wait for the screen to kind of catch up here. So the courses that we developed, this is kind of the best practices. Here's kind of a case study of, of what we do in academia for SDN, as well as what we do for industry training in, in academia. So with SDN, one thing that we do is um, we keep everything vendor neutral, right? That's the point of SDN is you don't want to be locked into a certain vendor. You want to just know the topics, how it works, and then you can apply that to any SDN technology. So everyone does SDN in their own way. Right now, if you think of all the service providers, each one is doing SDN, but each one is doing it a little differently. So AT&T, for example, they use three different SDN controllers in their network. So what we focus on here is, and what seems to work for getting our students and industry hired, is we focus on the core technology of OpenFlow. So OpenFlow is the backbone for everything SDN. So we decide that if you know OpenFlow, then you can figure out how SDN works. So you can use different controllers. As long as you know the technology, then you can apply it to the different software. So we also say, know the controllers. So we focus on open daylight, open contrail, open stack, floodlight, et cetera. Um, just have a grasp on all these different controllers because once you know one, you can apply that knowledge to the others. And there's no sense focusing all your training on one, such as open daylight, because if you go to a different company that doesn't use open daylight, then you've kind of wasted that training knowledge. So what we find is our students coming out with vendor specific certifications as well as these SDN O and F certifications, they just can take any job that's available. They can take the traditional routing and switching or they can take brand new SDN related jobs. And what we do, some of my best practices for SDN industry training is is keep it flexible. So if one service writer comes to you and says, hey, we're only using the SDN controller ONOS in our network, then, then teach them ONOS. Don't teach them Floodlight or Ryu. Only teach them, be adaptive. If, if they want something specific, teach them just that specific. Um, another thing you need to keep in mind is adding additional training. So not just SDN specific, but 
with SDN, with Python, automation, Unix, Linux, everything kind of working together, those are things that you're going to need to incorporate as well. So be flexible and be able to offer that training as well because a lot of times companies are going to come to you not just for SDN specific but also the kind of underlying technologies that use SDN such as Linux and Python. And one other thing here is be able to SDN programming type courses as well as some managers they're only going to want to know the software so they're going to want to know how open daylight works not how to program a Python application so there's different levels there's your network architects who are going to want to need to program the actual network but then there's some network engineers who just need to know how to use the software and how to use an API to control a software defined networking controller so make sure that you don't just focus on programming or you don't just focus on software um, tailor it specifically to your audience and finally the last thing I have to say is with SDN, make sure that if people don't transition to SDN, whether they're in industry or academia, they're going to be left behind. What we're finding is people who have been working and routing and switching for the past 10 years or 15 years, if they don't transition to learning software-defined networking, they're not going to be able to get promoted. All they're going to be doing for the rest of their life is programming, configuring routers and switches. So SDN education, I think, is, is paramount right now for anyone moving forward in this network engineering role. Software-defined networking is going to transition and change everything that's happened with network engineering up to this date. So Connie, if you'd like to open it up for questions, I'll be happy to help any way I can. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Dr. Perigo. So, uh, yeah, please uh, put your questions in the chat box and uh, we will go through that uh, with you. So, one of the questions from the audience is, what is your 2017 prediction for the development of SDN? Yeah, great question. So, this coming year, 2017, I think is going to be critical for SDN. Um, Many people have saw in the news, if you're keeping up with anything ONF or SDN, you've noticed that service providers, um, internet service providers all over the world have said 2017 is the year that they're going to transition to software-defined networking. And in the U.S., I would say that every major service provider, AT&T, CenturyLink, Comcast, Verizon, they are all in the transition period right now. And many people have said that 2017 or 2018, they would like their networks to be completely automated and completely using software-defined networking. So it is right upon us right now. It is very paramount and very prevalent in the industry. So the sooner that you can get trained or the sooner that industry professionals can get trained, the better it's going to be for everyone. Yeah, great question. Okay, thank you. Um, next question, is SDN useful in small, medium companies which are not service providers or similar? Yeah, another outstanding question. So what we're seeing right now is all the marketing is related towards Internet service providers. But a lot of people are missing out on the small to medium-sized businesses. So a lot of the consulting that I've done is for as small, medium-sized businesses because they don't have a technical staff a lot of times. So they don't have people who can configure their routers, configure their switches. If you can do it via a software-defined networking model, it's exponentially cheaper. So they can buy vendor-neutral hardware. Um, they can have small people write the beginning programs to configure their network. And so the entry into the market of SDN for a small and medium-sized business is very very economical so I see right now the cost savings is one of the biggest benefits for small and medium-sized businesses okay thanks um, next question can you please explain again the role Python plays in SDN yeah thank you so so Python right now is kind of the network engineering programming language 
that everyone is looking to learn. So Python is kind of a scripting language that works to help automate all the configurations of your routers and switches. But one of the benefits that it has in software-defined networking is you can write vendor-neutral commands. So I can write a Python program that talks via an API to my software-defined networking controller, and then that controller then talks to my routers and switches and programs them. So I don't need to program a Cisco switch. I don't need to program that via the CLI. I can write just a high-level Python program. So if I just know the programming language Python, I can write a script or I can write a small program in Python that configures a Juniper, configures a Cisco, configures an Arista. I don't need to know the individual command line interfaces of all that different hardware. I can just know one language, which is Python, and then it can in turn program all the hardware devices in my network. Yeah, so I, I highly recommend Python as the, the software-defined networking language and uh, for the future, for sure. Okay. Yeah, great question. In relation to that uh, answer, actually, Dr. Perigo, there's a question. Why Python over C++? Yep, good, plus, good question again. So C++ is um, kind of traditionally a low-layer hardware-type programming language. And what we're, we're not trying to program actual hardware um, with Python. What we're doing with Python is we're just configuring an application that talks to our software-defined networking controller, and then the controller talks southbound, typically via OpenFlow, to the networking devices. So we're not, we're not physically programming uh, with a low-level language such as C++ or Java, what we're using Python for is just a very high-level programming language for applications that change the way our network works. So that is a very common question of C++. Usually what C++ is doing is we are actually writing code to configure the way the hardware works within an operating system or the kernel-level programming. What Python's going to do is it's going to be a high-level programming language that manipulates the way our network functions. Okay, thanks. Well, looking at the time, we actually have time, I would say, for two more questions, and then many questions coming in. So I'm doing my best to try to, uh, to kind of group that. I think one of the, a few of you asked very similar questions in terms of um, FDN has been around for some time, um, why have companies not adopted it fully? And in connection to that, also the question is, well, SDN is yet to be fully developed, so is it safe for companies to start using it before it becomes a mature technology? Yeah, that is, a, that is an outstanding question, and, and that's kind of one of the, the biggest issues that we're having right now with software-defined networking. So one of the things I can kind of compare it to is IPv6. So IPv6 has been around for nearly 20 years now, and just now is it starting to get implemented widely. So software-defined networking is kind of there as well. It's been around since about 2008. But one of the recommendations that I have and what I give to industry when implementing SDN is, is stick to open source. So anything that's an open source standard, that is the safest to use, So such as Make sure that your switches, your SDN controllers, make sure that they all support OpenFlow. So it's not the standard, it's not mandatory to use OpenFlow, but right now that is the southbound protocol that is the most standardized and it has the most RFC specifications on it. So I would say to be the safest, make sure that all your, in, all your infrastructure supports OpenFlow and I think going forward, one of the reasons right now that SDN is kind of slow to adopt is people have such a large infrastructure of traditional routers and switches. So a lot of times you can upgrade the software. So for, for instance, on an HP or an Arista, you can say, get a firmware upload, and now those switches support OpenFlow. 
But there are other devices who, if I've already just spent a large amount of traditional routing and switching in my network, I'm not going to take all that out and add SDN type equipment. So that's one of the delays right now is just people transitioning from their current infrastructure to a new infrastructure that supports software-defined networking. And another kind of final reason is security. So security with SDN is a big issue. Um, right now, people are just trying to get it to work in their network, and a lot of times on new technologies like this, they kind of shy away from security. They just want to get it to work, and they don't focus on how important security is. And I think that's one of the reasons that it's being adopted a little slower. So again, my recommendation is stick with open source. So open flow, don't, don't move towards the vendor specific SDN. And again, this is just my recommendation. This isn't anything um, that is mandatory, but my recommendation is if you stick to the open source community, then that's what's going to propel everyone in the future. Okay, thanks. And um, so does SDN still make sense if a service provided is still operating in, with the legacy classical network? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it is, it is absolutely apparent that we are moving toward an SDN technology future. So if, if a service provider or your company is not currently doing SDN, I think what's going to happen is they're going to be left behind. And you don't want to be caught off guard of having to force to move to an SDN really quickly without having any trained professionals within the company. So I think we are at a point right now that you have to know SDN going forward. Okay, thanks. Um, so actually I have two additional slides and one of them may actually answer one of the questions. Uh, asking for any um, specific learning resource for ONF certification. So I know some of you, uh, some of you in the audience, you're looking to uh, get yourself or your team trained. If you visit the website of um, ONF, you will find a listing of the providers for SDN training and education. And of course, uh, the University of Colorado will be one of the possibilities for you to, uh, to get this education. But there are also others listed on the website. Um, and also on the ONF website, there are also um, learning resources available. So check it out. And if you are a company, a training or consulting company looking to um, help your customers, uh, to get them up to speed with SEM skills, uh, you can become a training provider, a training partner, uh, an ONF approved SEM training partner. And, um, and by working with ITpreneurs, uh, we can help you also to source courseware so that you can start offering the training uh, right away. And we also give you access to uh, the trainer trainer webinars. And you will get visibility uh, on the web website of ONF of your logo there and also possibilities for you to um, to bid to provide SDN training and deliver exams at ONF sponsored events and also possibilities to promote your training courses on the skills certification newsletter. So on this note uh, I would like to uh, thank Dr. Terrigal for um, this excellent webinar and uh, there are still many many questions uh, from the audience but unfortunately we won't be able to tackle that during this webinar and uh, we'll get back to you with the answers. So thank you very much Dr. Perigo and, um, and everyone here also your feedback is very important to us. We love to hear what you thought of today's webinar. Once we end this webinar there will be a quick survey, and uh, we appreciate if you take a minute to complete that. So thank you, everyone, again for coming today, and uh, we hope to see you back at another webinar next year on um, SDN. So thank you, and bye now. <laughs>